Hello, VTOX here. And today we're gonna to be covering how to use Doubler with the Boss RC505 looper. Now, to begin, you gotta kinda of understand signal flow and how the voice is kinda of gonna navigate through all of this. Now, it might seem like a lot, but it's not that complicated. To begin, we gotta think about voice going to MIDI. So in this example, I'm gonna be using the Doubler microphone, which is connected via USB to the computer but you can also use a regular microphone via interface or a different USB microphone to get into the doubler software. So voice, beatboxing melody into the microphone via USB into the doubler2 software. Now to set that up, you just click your input. I won't go too in depth on how to properly set up the microphone in doubler, but once it's all set up, then doubler sends that MIDI information to whatever DAW you're using. So in my example, my DAW is Ableton. So once we've set up the connection there, the output, so the output from our DAW is going to be connected to your interface. In my example, I'm using Focusrite Thunderbolt. So it's gonna be sent here. Then the output of the interface goes to the input of the Boss RC looper. I'm doing that through a patch cord. So you could do a mono single patch cord stereo. And then you wanna make sure that when you're setting this up to make sure the input levels is around 12 o'clock. That's like a safe place to start. And then for the output from the looper, same thing, keep it around 12 o'clock depending on your headphones. And then you're gonna send that output through another patch cable or to your headphones, uh, to speakers, to another interface, to a recording device. So just to recap, we have voice to MIDI either via a USB microphone or your own microphone using the doubler software. Then once it's in your computer, the doubler software then takes it to your DAW of choice, Ableton, Logic. Then from the software out to your interface, then from your interface to the loop station, from the loop station to your headphones or speakers or recording device, etc. So now that you understand how signal flow works, Let's get into testing some sounds and, and getting this thing really working. So let's pull up our Doubler 2 software. In this example, I'll be using triggers, so beatboxing and pitch. You can already see that it's picking up a little bit of my pitch here. So I won't go into detail on how to train the triggers and beatboxing, that's for a different video. But once you have your whole thing set up, in this example, I'm using kick, hi-hat, snare, some wood claps, and I have it sending to channel 10 for beatboxing, and channel three for melody. This is MIDI channels. So to test, let's record arm one of our tracks in Ableton. So in this example, I'll be using the beatboxing, so the triggers. So if the levels ever sound quiet, remember to either increase the volume of your interface, maybe to about 12 o'clock, maybe a little louder. You can also increase the input of your boss looper. So here I have it a little bit above 12 o'clock, and my interface also about one o'clock. So now that we've tested some sounds, you might notice that there maybe is a little bit of latency. So to fix that, let's go into Ableton and pull up our preferences. You can do that by clicking live and preferences or command comma. Now let's look at our latency buffer size. If you can, try to lower the buffer size. The lower the buffer size, the less the latency. If your computer can handle it, try and do 32 samples. But you may notice on the top right in Ableton, they'll show a percentage. This indicates how sort of heavy and intense your CPU is working. If it gets too high, you might start to get crackling sounds. But we'll try 32 samples here. So now that we've adjusted our buffer size to be as low as possible, let's see if there's any latency issues. That is really good. Considering the signal flow of going from voice to computer to interface to looper, and in my case to another interface and then headphones, it's pretty low latency, it's quite impressive. Now, if your computer can't quite go to 32 or 64 samples, just go up incrementally, bit by bit, until you find that sweet spot where your computer is not struggling too much, but there's not as much delay or latency. So now that we've understood the signal flow, the gain staging's done correctly, 
the latency is as low as possible. Let's try and make a beat. Now, for this beat, I'm using triggers, bass, and synth melody through doubler, and I'm also going to be using the doubler microphone for voice. Now, the way you can do that is creating a fourth track as an audio track and set your input to doubler USB, because doubler is also a vocal mic. So everything I'm about to make is going to be using doubler's vocal mic, but always keep in mind you can use your own microphone using their software.